Welcome everyone to today's Friday Forum. I'm Casey Umland, one of the program directors here at the Y, and this semester Friday Forum is one of my responsibilities. Um, we're really excited about our series for spring 2014, Creative Approaches to Economic Security. I invite you all, if you haven't already, to take a look at our series brochures, which are on the welcome table. Um, and we'd like to thank our series co-sponsors for financially supporting this program. I'm not going to list them all because then that would be the talk. Um, but we're very thankful for the generous support of so many folks on campus. Sign language interpreters are available for any speaker in this series as long as we get a couple of days notice. So if you're interested in those services, please um, contact the front desk for more details. We will also rebroadcast this and many more lectures on WEF 90.1 Community Radio, Urbana Public Television, and in most cases we get them up on YouTube within a couple of days. So if you ever miss one, you have many options. After the presentation, please feel we'll begin a question and answer period using the remote microphone currently in my hand. Um, if you need to ask a question, we do ask for you to wait for the microphone. Um, this is not because we're trying to cut you off or be selective, but merely because we want to make sure that we get your questions on the radio rebroadcast and that Paul can hear them. If you need to leave at any time during the presentation for class or other reasons, please feel free to discreet discreetly slip out. If you're a student who's here for some sort of credit, um, make sure that you sign in on the sign-in sheet that's circulating um, or on the welcome table. Or if you would like to receive emails about these or other programs with the Y, also please make sure to sign in. We would love to send you more information about our programs. Um, and so finally, I'd like you to join me in welcoming um, our Executive Director, Mike Doyle, who is actually here in his capacity as a board member for UC Smiles, our very own local currency, to introduce today's speaker. Thank you, Casey. Uh, good afternoon and welcome, everyone. I appreciate you uh, joining us today, and in spite of the COVID vortex that's upon us, so I appreciate your uh, coming out. And I'm very excited about introducing today's speaker. Um, as Casey mentioned, I'm on the board of UC Smile, so I'm going to take a second to give a quick plug to that. You might have noticed there's a table out front, so if you want to be involved in an effort to start a local currency and develop it and strengthen it, please do. They have Bumper stickers, I'm talking our wares. They have bumper stickers, a little brochure. Uh, you can see what our wonderful UC local currency smile looks like. Uh, you actually don't have to put this in your pocket. It's, this is just a model of it. Uh, it's really much more about this size. So feel free, if you would like to get some local currency and support local businesses for it, they have them for sale out there uh, at the table. So please uh, do that after the talk here. Uh, and also, last night I had the pleasure of meeting Paul uh, with a few UC Smile board members. Uh, Paul Glover is the founder of Ithaca Hours, one of the first local currency systems, the Ithaca Health Alliance, Philadelphia Orchard Project, Citizen Planners of Los Angeles, and a dozen more organizations. He is an author of several books and urban, and urban histories, including Hometown Money, How to Enrich Your Community with Local Currency, Deep Green Jobs, and Health Democracy, Liberating Americans from Health Insurance. He has degrees in marketing and city management. After 35 years of community organizing on behalf of grassroots economic development and ecological repair, he started a consultancy called Green Planners to help communities prepare a secure and abundant future, uh, even while food, fuel and food costs rise. Please help me welcome Paul Glover. Currency that I invented in 1991, 
during the Great Recession of 1991, which of course is mild in comparison with what we face today, many people face today. Um, I have a background in graphic arts, in journalism, and in arrogance. And so I started, I designed the paper money for Ithaca, New York. I studied with about 30,000 people. Uh, and began to walk around prototype designs of this money. And spoke with thousands of people and said, this is going to be money. We'll trade it with each other. Sign up here. And to their credit, they didn't say, well, this is a dumb idea. You'll get us in trouble. They signed up and said, well, let's try it out. And uh, within a few months, published the first directory of, of, of hundreds of ways that this money could be spent within the Ithaca community. Denominated as hours, a measure steady as the clock. One Ithaca hour equaling an hour of basic labor for $10, which was at the time the average of wages and salaries per hour in the Ithaca area. An animal of fairness and how people are paid. The half hour, therefore, $5 by printed on pen paper, half paper, half of which was from California, an illegal paper. A quarter hour worth $2.50, featuring Ithaca's children and on the back, um, Finger Lakes Farms planting Ithaca's future. The eighth hour, featuring a salamander, dollar twenty-five, on the back, a bug found only in the Ithaca area, a bug that eats bacteria that eats slime mold that devour the fallen trees that decompose trees into soil. Soil, the foundation of agriculture, thus of civilization. So we honor this bug on our line. The two-hour note printed on cattail paper, harvested by the railroad tracks and pumped into paper with a water bottle. Harder to counterfeit than dollars. I'll pass these around. These are the back. They are real money. This is the one-hour commemorative note featuring uh, Beverly Martin, uh, an African-American lifelong educator in First paper money in the United States. I'll take it. Thank you. So, we, we have transacted millions of dollars of value of this money since 1991, making loans up to $30,000 value. Interest free. And that's a fundamental monetary revolution. Making grants to over 100 community organizations so far, organizations dedicated to the community. So the theme of this talk is the power of community currency. And I've sometimes, I, I have sorted this out, identify four powers of local currency. The first, of course, obviously, would be to meet local needs. We need more money in Ithaca, and so we print it ourselves. If you if you need more money, print it yourselves. Money is, among other things, official-looking pieces of paper. So you're an American. Print it yourself. It doesn't look like dollars. It hasn't got the same shape as dollars. It doesn't pretend to be dollars. And so curiously, it is not illegal in the United States to print 